Chapter 4 Into the Forest Dorothy enjoyed walking with the scarecrow. Having no brains, he often stepped into holes and fell flat on the hard bricks. It never hurt him, though, as he was made of straw. Dorothy would pick him up and set him upon his feet again, while he joined her laughing merrily at his own mishap. The farms here were not nearly so well cared for as they had been farther back. There were fewer houses and fewer fruit trees. The farther they went, the more dismal and lonesome the country became. Eventually, the trio came to a dark, dense forest. The trees were so big and close together that the branches met over the road of yellow bricks. It was almost completely dark underneath. The trees and the branches shut out the daylight, but Dorothy and her companion continued on bravely. Well, the scarecrow said, the road goes in and must come out. Anyone would know that, Dorothy remarked. Certainly, that is why I know it, said Scarecrow. If it required brains to figure it out, I would have never seen it. The farther into the forest they went, the darker it got. After an hour or so, the light faded away completely, and they found themselves stumbling along into the darkness. Dorothy could not see at all, but Toto could, for some dogs see very well in the dark. The Scarecrow declared that he could see as well as by day, so Dorothy let him lead the way. If you see a house or any place where we can spend the night, she said, you must tell me, for I am tired, and it is very uncomfortable walking in the dark. Soon after, the scarecrow stopped. I see a little cottage built out of the logs and branches over there to the right of us, he said. Shall we go there? Yes, indeed, answered Dorothy. I'm tired. So the scarecrow led her through the tall trees until they reached the cottage. Dorothy entered and found a bed dried leaves in one corner. She lay down at once with Toto beside her soon fell into a sound sleep. The scarecrow, who was never tired, stood in another corner, waiting patiently until morning came. When Dorothy woke, the trio set off to look for water. They found a little spring where Dorothy drank and washed her face and hands. As they headed back to the road, Dorothy heard a strange sound like a squeaky groan. She searched until she found the source of the sound. A woodcutter made entirely of tin. He looked without moving an inch, his ax raised above his head. He looked as if he were rusted in place. Did you groan? asked Dorothy. Yes, I did, replied the tin wood man sadly. I've been standing here for over a year and no one has helped me. I'm mighty tired of standing here. What can we do to help? she asked. Go get my old can from the cottage over there. If you want my jokes, then I'll be free to move again. Dorothy raced through the trees to get the tin, man, tin wood man's oil can. Minutes later, she was back in the clearing, and the scarecrow helped her oil all the tin woodman's joints. Finally, he could move again. He skipped around the clearing joyously, celebrating his release. Oh, thank you, the tin woodman cried. I might have stood there forever if you hadn't helped me. What are you doing way out here anyway? We are traveling to the Emerald City to see the Great Oz, Dorothy told him. I'm going to help him to send Toto and me back to Kansas, and the scarecrow wants to Ask him for a brain. Really? asked the tin woodman. Do you think that Oz could give me a heart? I am merely a hollow shell of a man with no heart. I don't see why not, said Dorothy. It shouldn't be any harder than giving the scarecrow a brain. Come along, said the scarecrow. We'll all go together. Yes, chimed in Dorothy. It would be great to have your company. So off the four of them went on their way, along the road of yellow bricks toward the Emerald City.